Hello again, folks. After somewhat of a hiatus, uh, uh, before I get into what I want to talk about today, um, I would just like to comment on a few things. Uh, it's been a, uh, and this will help me to kind of work into my sermon, I suppose. Uh, but uh, it's, I have to say, as a uh, as a student of history, uh, things that have occurred as of probably just the past couple of months have been kind of surreal to me because it's like I watch all this stuff, you know, I watch history all the time. And to see, you know, see coronations of kings and queens and and uh, militaries and this and that and, and uh, uh, uprisings and coups and rebellions and whatnot and uh, uh, but it's been kind of funny because as of recent it's like that uh, instead of uh, instead of just watching about the history of things happening there have been quite a things quite a bit of things happening in real time like for example I think it was what May the 6th I believe it was uh, uh, the coronation of King Charles and uh, so that you know, I'd always watch this stuff on the History Channel or whatever, or wherever. Um, you know, like uh, the old coronations of the kings and queens in the past, and going to Buckingham Palace and you know waving at everybody from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. And then I actually got to see it myself, an actual coronation of a king. So it's like now I actually get to do it. And then with all this stuff like uh, uh, that's happening and going on in Russia. And you know, with just the other day, the uh, uh, the private military guy kind of broke ranks, and uh, uh, you know uh, they didn't know how that was going to turn out. And uh, you know, everybody was was like, "Oh well, is this going to be a situation of total rebellion, or what's going to go on?" You know, this is this is just it's like modern. I'm getting modern stuff now. That, and I don't want to downplay. I want to say that because it, it's terrible. You know, war is terrible. We, we all know, but. But they're on the same hand, to see it in real time, to see this stuff going on in real time, is almost surreal after watching it so long on history. So it's just, things are just happening now that are, um, that are just, you know, just real time. So, so anyway, I suppose we might uh, do a little bit of uh, that ourselves today in this sermon in bringing things that were... Uh, and this is not where I'm going with this at all. I'm not going to preach a, uh, a Brother Cook special where, uh, you know, it's all history made up into the day. That's not really where I'm going with this. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's kind of a, a bringing things that were up into modern times nonetheless. And that's what I want to talk about. But this is not going to be a political type sermon or a historical type sermon. Uh, maybe it might get into a little bit of uh, uh, religious history, but not much more like uh, ideologies so anyway uh, just just a little starter something uh, to get me kind of get me going uh, but anyway trying to waste any more of your guys's time uh, the uh, uh, I would like to entitle this sermon that I'm going to preach today as let the dead bury their dead that is going to be the name of this sermon. And uh, this is going to be, I believe, very controversial. Probably, as far as I can tell, about the most controversial thing that I think has been said in a very long time. Uh, of course, we have the traditional controversial things. See, now you've got, you've got the mainstream uh, non-conventional, non-traditional things. And what this is going to be, this is going to be a non-mainstream uh, non-traditional, controversial thing, because we've got all the things of the third coming. You know, we've got uh, the uh, you know we're we're Christ and you are Christ, and then you you brace it on up, and you've got oneness like third coming oneness, and then you've got uh, or not third coming oneness, but love divine oneness, and then you've got you know other things. You've got like unity message and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, the unity message. That's that's really kind of a new. That's, that's kind of a little bit off the mainstream in a sense. That's, that's really a new, super new type of thing. Pretty, pretty new. Uh, 
in well it's it's just creeping into the mainstream let's say but uh it's been around but it's it's just now really kind of getting starting to knock on the door of the mainstream but nonetheless you've got these things and they're they're kind of mainstream constructs of uh, uh, controversial but yet mainstream now you know it's it's mainstream now that uh Oneness, the, the idea of love divinic oneness is mainstream. I mean, it's really become mainstream by now. It's uh, the idea that we're all one, you know, third testament, third coming, uh, or uh, uh, that uh, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's mainstream. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit non-mainstream. I want to, today I'm going to take some controversial mainstream things and I'm going to go controversial to them because things like for example see this idea that we've had I call it the physio dimensional uh, the physio dimensional dead saints is what I call it and it's this notion that we have had for a while now that and and in my opinion is mainstream amongst us is that the the dead saints are here in in another dimension that occupies the same space as this one but they're in a higher form in a sense and you can't you can't a faster higher form and you can't see them okay that is that has become now that's very controversial in the grand scope of things like you know we're we're christ that's very controversial in the grand scope of things out here but amongst the third coming, the, the physio-dimensional dead saints is uh, it's fairly mainstream. You know what I mean? That's been fairly mainstream for a while now. That's, you know, because you've got kind of like the, the, theophany, uh, the theophany ideas and this and that. And then, you know, to some degree, that, and that might be a little bit more on, the, on one end of the spectrum or not, the, the physio-dimensional dead saints. But... Nonetheless, that's, you know, it's, it's kind of mainstream. So some, some sides might have a little bit of dissension with that. It might be more just straight theophany people and, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what their take on it is. But nonetheless, the physio-dimensional dead saints is a pretty mainstream construct by now. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to, and I want to... Uh, what, I'm get, what I'm going to say today is going to be way out there. It's going to be, like I say, controversial, even to the mainstream of, the, which, of this third coming, which is, my, in the greater scope of things, not mainstream at all. Okay, so, so I'm going controversial to the controversial. Uh, and so anyway, I'll just get right into it. The... Uh, uh, this I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to do this in true church fashion today. Uh, I'm going to actually start off with reading the scripture. All right, and then I got another one. I, I got a brand of scripture to read too. So just so we get the idea of this. Uh, but uh, let's see. Okay, I'll, uh, this is Luke. What is this? Luke something? Yeah, Luke chapter nine. King, good old fashioned King James version. Okay. Uh, hang on just a second. Let me pull it up here. All right. I'm going to start it at about, I can start it anywhere, but I'm going to start it at about uh, verse 58. All right. <clears throat> may, may the Lord uh, lend his blessings to the reading of this scripture. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> we got to do it in true church fashion, you know. All right. So anyway. Uh, uh, okay. Verse 58. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Well, uh, let me go to 57. And it came to pass that as they went away, a certain man said unto the Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds have nests. Basically, the birds have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me to go and bury my father. Then verse 60, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So that's what I'm going to do today. 
I'm going to let the dead bury the dead, but I am going to preach the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's a very good summation of what I'm going to do. Uh, so anyway, uh, what you've got out here is, as far as I can tell, as far as my opinion of it goes, and I believe my opinion to be accurate, is that uh, we've got uh, too many people trying to bury the dead. Uh, they won't just believe things as they are. But rather they want to, they are just totally concerned about the dead. And they need to stop being concerned about the dead. And they need to uh, 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 preach the kingdom of God is what they need to do, essentially. To, to, in, in, King, in King James wordy Piscean version terms, that's what they need to do. Stop with the dead people. Stop. Okay, enough of the dead people. I've had enough of the dead people. Okay, is what, what I want to say here. We need to uh, understand, you know, in good old-fashioned King James Version, uh, we need to uh, we need to understand the uh, uh, stopping to bury the dead, stop burying the dead, and preach the kingdom and and preach the kingdom of God. Okay, so now let's move on here. I've got something else. It'll take me just a second to find it. Oop, that's not it. Okay. Now, I want to get people to think a little bit. I want to use some of the signs and the ways and things that we have learned. I've been trying to say this for years. Is that there are certain things that once you get attuned to it, you get to be a professional. And I hate to... I don't want to make this go into like a, we need to make a uh, theology over it or anything. But, uh, and I don't want to make it like a scientific code to where you have to do things this way. That's not what I'm trying to do. But there on the same hand, those things are not entirely inaccurate. Um, or at least the, the scientific code of it anyway. Um, the, when you, I'll just put it, put it let me just put it in these terms. When you do something over and over and over, you get good at it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's not that's not wrong. Now, if you do it for sake, if the the way that you do things become like a religion, I would say you've got a perhaps an issue. But but if you just get good at something, you're just good at it. Then what's wrong with that? So it's like this. Uh, I'm going to use deer hunting for an example, and you can do anything, but. If you've deer hunted a lot over the years, then you learn things. You learn, uh, you learn how to find deer because you learn how to spot deer trails. You uh, learn how to spot uh, deer rubs, deer scrapes, uh, 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 deer beds. You know everything. You learn all this stuff, and uh, you know deer droppings. Dare I say, you learn these things, and you get good at it. You get your your eye, your eye gets good at spotting these things, and you know where to put your tree stand up, and you know where to hunt. Okay, so uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's a good thing. And so you're, and the funny thing about it is, is that when you when you hunt when you hunt deer with people, it's called sign deer sign, because you see you see well there's a deer bed. You can see where the deer's been laying. For those of you who've never hunted deer. You can see where the deer have laid on the ground because you know when they lay down they, they roll over on the ground and they and they lay there for a while. It makes a bed, an imprint in the grass or whatever, and that's where the deer has been. Okay, so whenever you come by two days later and you see where the deer has been laying at, then that's that's deer sign. That's called sign. You, you say uh, whenever you talk to somebody, a hunter talks to another hunter, and they you know he's been out in the woods and he was looking for deer sign to find out where to put his tree stand he say uh, the other guy would say uh, well did you see any sign out there and they'd be like yeah I've seen some scrapes and rubs and beds and, and whatnot you know and they say okay so that means you know he's seen sign sign of the deer so it's the same thing that when you're you know we always talk about hunting on hunting grounds anyway right so and comparing that to the spiritual understandings of things so it's the same thing if you're in the spiritual understanding, if you're hunting on these spiritual hunting grounds, then you got to see sign. You got to see sign of things, and 
as you, you'll be able to spot sign of spiritual revelation and more understanding if you have done it for a while, if you have hunted deer for a while, if you have hunted spirituality and hunted revelation for a while, okay, you'll be able to see these sign, this sign, you see. So what I have done is, is I've been in this for a long time and I've been deer hunting, I've been uh, hunting on these spiritual hunting grounds for a long time, so I have got good at seeing sign. I'm a, I'm a regular Daniel Boone. I've been able to, a, a regular Davy Crockett, I've been able to see, see sign. It, Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett was old timers whenever they first went into the frontier. If you needed somebody to track, track something, track an animal, track a human being, they could go through the woods and they, you know, they were masters of the woods and they, they would be able to, they'd be able to track where somebody had went or an animal had went or anything. So, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten to be uh, uh, a, a real, a regular Daniel Boone here of finding these things in this frontier of the message. And so anyway, I, I'm a regular Daniel Boone who've been able to spot sign of something new, of something, of some, under, some new understanding and revelation. And so anyway, I have found some sign and of something that I want to talk about today. And before I get into it, everybody in the country may disagree with me, and that's fine, and I expect that they will because this one's really out there, okay? This is, this is what my sign, what the sign that I'm reading in the woods shows me. The, spiritual, the sign of, in the spiritual woods shows me that is, that is correct. Based on the sign, based on the evidence, this is what I see as correct. So, so anyway, uh, there are two things that, before I forget, and I might reiterate this, but in tracking sign, like I said, you're tracking deer, you've got deer beds, Deer, deer scrapes, deer rubs, deer blah, 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 blah. Okay, in spiritual hunting, you have, in my opinion, some signs that I would look to from right off the bat is, uh, is what, we, what we've learned occurs over and over and over. Because you're deer hunting, you see these things, these occurrences over and over and over, and say, well, there's where the deer's at. Okay, well, in the spiritual, it's the same way. You have occurrences that are over and over and over. And once you begin to recognize what you've done it so many times and seen so many deer rubs and so many deer scrapes and so many deer beds, and when you've seen so many spiritual anomalies that happen over and over and over, then you just get quick at it. You just get good at it and you say, oh, well, I know where the deer's at just by the signs. So, for example, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you, a, uh, I'll give you an example. An example is, is that, for just a simple example, over time, if something has been a mainstream message for a while, then you know, look at it. It's probably not correct anymore. It's probably, you could probably do better. Because if it's been there for a while, then you know naturally due to the course of time that you know things evolve essentially, understandings evolve. Okay, so you just know that's just a sign, you know, hey, this message has been around for 40 years. Well, we should probably start looking for another one. So that's just an example of a sign. That's an example of a spiritual sign. Okay, so, uh, so, I'll, so I'll give you another example. If we know that things always move from physical to spiritual, or from physical to a rather an under, a spiritual understanding, we know that. Okay, so if it's a sign to me, I see it as a sign and know that it's got to be true. That if you, if you. If you take something and we take something and it's it was physical and we moved it to spiritual or moved it to at least more spiritual, then if you can see that in more of a spiritual way than perhaps you had or if you just had the total physical version of it and you can see it in a more spiritual way, a more revelation way, then you know that that's that sign, that's that sign in the woods at the hunting grounds that... Uh, you're tra you're after you you're you're tracking a, a deer, you you're you're after a deer. You're after a revelation, and you're on the right track. It's a sign that you're on the right track. Okay, there are so many of these that you we know. Like for example, uh, the rapture. The rapture we went from it was a physical rapture to a a revelation. Okay, so you know that, and then so many other times we have done it to where we took things that were 
a physical thing to a revelation. Okay, so I know that if I if I can if I'm able to take something from a physical thing to a revelation, then I'm on the right track. Okay, I'm seeing sign. Okay, so that's what I want to do today. I want to take some things that we had as physical or halfway physical, halfway spiritual, and I want to move them forward. Okay. Um, here is William Branham, The Indictment, 1963. Uh, Branham, verse 261. We may not live to see the rapture. This is 1963, of course. Uh, we may not live to see the rapture. I may die today. You may die today. I don't know. But the rapture is coming. That's, that's when, when, that co when that comes. We'll be there. Don't worry. Uh-huh. So will all the rest of them back through the ages that's believed it and looked for it. They walked in the light of their day. Okay. So, now, now. So that was 1963. Now, we know as third coming believers that the rapture has already happened. That basically was the rapture. Okay, if you could understand it. And we all over here, none of us would are rapture deniers, I guess you could say. Uh, we all believe that the rapture has happened, right? Okay, so, so now, if I plug that into this scripture here, my question is this, is, uh, but the rapture is coming, that's, that's when that comes, we'll be there, don't worry. Okay, well now, now we're looking at it from the perspective of the rapture has already occurred. So that means that whenever all the things that we and Branham here connected with the rapture, should be right here amongst us, right? Okay, so here's what he says was going to happen when the rapture came, which we now know has come. Uh, but when that comes, we'll be there, don't worry. Uh, talking about the rapture. Uh-huh, so will all the rest of them back through the ages that's believed it and looked for it, looked for it uh, they walked in the light of their day. Okay, so according to this, when the rapture happens, which we know it's already happened, then... That means that all these dead saints that, uh, as he put it, uh, the rest of them back through the ages that's believed it and looked for it, will be there. He said, we'll be there, uh-huh. Don't worry, and so will all of them. Okay, so my question to you is this. Where are they at? Where are they at? You say, we say, oh, well, uh, we've come up with this uh, new idea here that, uh, now look, we got the rapture. Okay, so we know that the rapture was a revelation. It was a spiritually, essentially, event, not physical. Okay, so I want to know, where are these... We, we, we claim we're sitting right here in the rapture, okay? And there's nothing that is hid from us, essentially. We claim that we've got a full, full 100% rapture. Nobody questions the fact that we got a full 100% rapture, okay? So where... I, wa I want somebody to tell me, where are these dead saints at? that believed it, that was supposed to be there in the rapture. Where are they at? Why don't I have them 100%? Why don't I have them 100%? You say, the idea, and I don't want to rag on this too bad because the revelation, it was a good revelation, but I think we can do better now. It was a good revelation, what I call the the physio-dimensional um, the physio-dimensional dead saints. What that is, is uh, to reiterate, what it is, is, is this idea that these dead saints are in fact, here, that we got a greater revelation on things, which it was, that the dead saints are dimensional and they're occupying the same space, roughly as us, roaming around here, but we can't see it. Okay, well, that, in my opinion, is a 50-50. It was better than what we had because we had, all we had was just dead people out, you know, somewhere in some other part of space in the Piscean version of it, so we came a long way. At least we put them here. Okay, so that was a 50% improvement, but they're still not here. I want them here. I don't want them in some other dimension to where you can't see them. Because if we've got the rapture, we don't we don't have 50% of a rapture. Why well, not going to have 50% of dead people? I want 100% of dead people. I want them to be here. Okay? So, here's what's going on. I propose to you today, and I'm just going to spit it out, and then I'm going to explain it later, that the dead people... See, what we did was, was like I said, when you, when you get good at tracking deer, 
you know, you know, if you see one thing, you see another, you see another, you put it all together and you know you're on the right track. Okay, so I'm gonna use that same methodology here. If the rapture went from physical to spiritual, then in that, in that uh, little uh, sermon of William Branham there, that little verse, I'm gonna take everything in that verse and I'm not just saying, well, oftentimes people make this terrible mistake. They say, well, now, we can believe this is spiritual, but now when it comes to this, no, that's still physical. Forget it. You do that, and you've messed up. People do that all the time. The third coming, is, or the third testament and the third coming, I see that happen quite a bit. Still today, still today. They'll take one thing, and it'll be, uh, they'll say, oh, brother, that's absolutely a revelation and spiritual. That, that's not a physical event, or that's not a physical thing. And then they'll take something else, and, and it's just just took it for common, for granted that it was just that's just still a physical thing, and that cannot be correct. You can't you can't take one thing and make it spiritual, and then take the thing very right next to it, and and make it and leave it as physical. It won't work. Okay, William Branham said that he said the exact same thing. He said uh, they take one thing and don't take the other thing. See, it don't it don't you just it can't work. So what I what I propose is this. If the rapture is a revelation, and we know it is, and then I propose that the dead saints that are supposed to be in the rapture are themselves just a revelation. Just like the rapture is not a physical event. I don't believe that the physical people that were supposed to be in the rapture are physical people. I believe that they themselves are a revelation. Because, tell, riddle me this, Batman, how? How can you get it to where that, how can you get it to where it makes any sense that we're going to go to a, we had a revelation. It was supposed to be a physical event. You know, it's, it was all cut and dried, no problem. Everybody had it all figured out, but he didn't. Whenever they said, well, here's what's going to happen. One day we're going to go, we're going to physically go flying up in the sky and then we're going to, you know, eat, eat whatever, eat chicken and rice, okay, and then Jesus is going to be there, and all the dead saints, and they're all physically going to be there in some sort of rough, you know, their, their version, it wasn't even as good as our third coming version of it is today, of the physio-dimensional whatever, okay, you know, and, and so anyway, it's all going to be everything, brother, it's all going to be physical, okay, and then, then we found, you know, that was, well, okay, that, that was, at least everything was all on the, the same playing field, you know, that, uh, well, it's a physical rapture, it's going to be the physical dead people there. Okay, all right, all right. But we now know that it was not, the rapture was in fact a revelation and not a physical event. Okay, so how do you put physical dead people in a revelation that's not a physical event? You can't do it. You cannot do it. I don't care even if you 50% it and make it to where, well, well, they're here, but they're not here. You know that you can't see them, but they're but they're here occupying the same space. Okay, they're still physical in some form. If you do it that way, that's why I call that version of it the physio-dimensional version, because they're in that other dimension that's that's faster than us, but they still got a, some sort of a physical form, right? I mean, that's you know, it's a it might be a different type of dimensional physical form. But, and later on, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll this around, and actually some of that stuff might not entirely prove to be totally inaccurate, technically inaccurate, but as these things have a habit of being, uh, later on when you find out and say, well, they weren't technically totally wrong, they just didn't have maybe the best, perhaps the best understanding of it, but nonetheless, getting back to the point, how do you take, it's still the physio, physio dimensional version of it that we have had for the past 20 years as third coming believers, and saying, well, they're just in a faster dimension. You know, they're occupying the same space, they're in a faster dimension, you can't see them. They still had an element of, of, of being physical, okay, in a sense. So, and, and another thing is, so that's one problem of it, because they can't be physical. There's no way they can be physical, because if the rapture is a revelation, then that means they've got to be a revelation too. They can't be physical, because you can have physical people in a revelation. It, it, it's... It's either physical or spiritual or, or one or the other, okay? It can't be. You can't have. You can't half-ass it and have have one being physical in a in a revelation. It just won't work, okay? So so anyway, the uh, but I mean I'm not knocking it too bad because that's all we had. But we had that for the past twenty years. 
That's been the status quo message for the past 20 years is the physio, well, I don't know about 20 years, but a long time. The physio dimensional uh, uh, dead saints, all right? So, A, that's been around a long time now. So, I'm inclined to believe that we could do better, okay? That's just, that's just hunting. That's just hunting tactics. Uh, so, anyway, it's like this. How it works is, is... I believe that the dead saints are not physical at all. Look, you can't have physical in a, in a revelation. You can't you can't take physical and spiritual and mix it together in such a kind of way that and it'll and, and it makes sense because you can't have a uh, you can't have the rapture be a revelation and then the dead saints are supposed to be in the rapture as a physical thing. You can't take it from a physical event to a revelation and take the physical people and not make them a revelation too. They have to be a revelation. They can't be physical people over here. They can't, you just, it just don't work. And, the, and another thing is, is it was only 50% good ever at all anyway, because try this. Now, I'm, you know, as I said before, I'm a love diviner, right? Okay, I believe in oneness. I very much believe in oneness. So you tell me how that we are one with these, if, if the physio-dimensional version of things still maintains to be correct, how are we one with people that we can't even communicate with? It doesn't make any sense. They're here, but you can't communicate with them. You're, they're, they're here, but we're separated from them. I don't believe in no separations at all. There cannot be a separation. Okay, we've got to be one. Either we're one or we ain't. Okay, either it's, it's, it's spiritual, the whole thing's spiritual, or damn, none of it's spiritual. Either we're one or we damn well ain't one. Let's just just cut to cut to crap. I'm t I'm tired of uh, trying to fifty fifty this stuff. As this this is all the same type of garbage in my opinion. That that thinking of it like that is the same kind of garbage as as what the message went through whenever they would they would get in this big conundrum of of after William Branham died where they couldn't figure out whether uh, uh, what they would do was basically was they would have questions about things that didn't seem to quite make sense. And nobody could answer. Okay, that's what we got here, in my opinion. Is that I remember whenever I was down there in the message church, and I just started to get the third coming, and I would go ask them things, and they they had no answer, you know. And then they probably thought she's a little funny, okay. And then I eventually got out of there. So, in my opinion, what we've had here in the past several years with this physio dimensional thing is I've had questions about it, and nobody has been able to give me any answers. It's been the same situation. And I think they probably thought I was a little funny for bringing it up. Okay, uh, so so my questions have been, here, here are some of the questions I've had, is that if we're all one, then how are we still yet separated? You know, if we're, if we're, if we're all one, and, you know, and there's, there can't be a separation, then how are we dealing with this dimensional approach. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to say that at the end of this, I'm going to wheel this back around to where we are, are in fact, dimensional. Okay? But I don't believe this dimensional version of it is the best one that we can have. I believe it's getting old now. And I believe we can do better. How can we be dimensional? How can, how can that, how can those dead people be one with us, but yet we can't, we're still separated from them, can't talk to them? Okay, I want to be able to have a conversation with them. If I'm one with somebody, that means I can talk to them, point blank. I can whatever. Okay, so nobody has ever been able to answer that for me. Nobody's ever been able to answer that. I've, I've stated this for a long time, and that's one of them things where you just don't get an answer because nobody really had an answer. And I'm not faulting anybody for it, but I'm just saying we can do better. So, the... And I know this is going to sound, this is going to sound totally out there whenever I try to explain this. And a lot of people's probably not going to believe it and are probably going to think I'm crazy. But I, I've had a pretty good track record over the years of coming up with stuff that uh, tended to be tended to prove itself right later on. So I don't expect anybody to believe this right off the bat. But maybe if you let it fester in your mind a little while, you might find out that it's true. So anyway, because it's going to be a lot to lot to take in, uh, in a sense. So anyway, getting back to the story. The, I believe that the dead people are a revelation, that they are not physical, that they are not physio-dimensional. They're dimensional, but they're not physio-dimensional. 
I don't think that they're, well, in a sense, they're physio dimensional because they are physical, because they are us. Okay, you see, how it works is, I, I'm going to do my best to explain this, so I know it's going to be hard to understand right off the bat, but you think about it. The physio dimensional version is going to prove out to be right, but not in the way everybody thought. And there is another, there is another sign, there's another methodology, there's another scientific, spiritual scientific thing that always proves out true. It's that everything is always true, just not the way we thought. The rapture was true, there was a rapture, but it's not the way we thought. Okay, so I propose to you today that the physio dimensional version, of the third coming version of where are the dead people, how do we explain that? was all in fact true that they are dimensional and that they do occupy the same space as us but just not the way we thought how it works is is that these dead people it's a it's a revelation they are not a physical being in that sense but they are a revelation but they do end up rolling back around to being physical because man it's, it's tough i'm gonna do my best i got so many thoughts and i can't even sort them all out the dimension in which that the dead people exist is not separate from us. It is us. The dead people are the revelation of what the dead saints are. Is you. That's, see, that's another thing. We always, that's another rule to thumb. That's another methodology of how you understand these things. It's another way that you find the deer on the hunting grounds, the spiritual hunting grounds. The sign is that you take... A, just like we said, we took everything that was physical and made it spiritual, and it made more sense. If you take everything that's out there and you put, make it you, it always makes more sense. So why not take the dead people, make them a revelation, and make them you? And then it'll make more sense. It's that the dead people are you. It's a revelation. It is, take them somewhere, take them from this, them, this 50% the in and out physio-dimensional thing. And, and don't leave them there. Just go ahead and fully 100% make them you. The dead saints are you. And they are not out here in, in some limbo where we can't communicate with them. They are you 100%. It's a revelation. They don't have a physical form in that sense, except for the fact that it's like this. They See, the physio-dimensional thing was right. It's just that you could you got to understand how it's how it's right. We can do better. What did the physio dimensional version of it say? It said that the dead saints are roaming around out here, occupying the same space as you. Okay, but they're in a different dimension. You can't see them. What's a dimensional? How do you how do you cross into a dimension? An understanding. An understanding is what allows you to cross into a dimension. So these dead saints that had some sort of uh, physical character, uh, dimensional, other dimensional physical character that occupied the same space as us, it's all true because they do occupy the same space as us because they are us. Their dirt body, their flesh body essentially is this one right here. It's you. It's they, they, those dead saints are occupying the same space. It's a different dimension. It's an understanding, a dimension of understanding that you have to move into to see that they are you. That's where they're occupying it. Was, they were right. The physio-dimensional idea was right because they are, in fact, occupying the same space as you because they are you. They're not separate from you. I can commune with the dead here, essentially. I can commune with the, the dead, um, uh, those dead dimensional saints because I crossed into that dimension not by a physical happening, not by a physical event of literally dying or whatever, you know, a Piscean version of dying, but by taking a revelation. Because, like I said, it's either all revelation or it ain't. It's either that everything's us or it ain't. Okay? It's all oneness. I believe in oneness, and I believe that everything is spiritual. So, or that that's the way things are moving. So, I took them from out there, where they were in this limbo, physio-dimensional thing, and I moved them here. And I got them here as a revelation and I got them here occupying the same space as me because they are me because we're all one. I got oneness, I got revelation, I got spiritual, nothing's 50% anymore. I got it all right here. Okay, I don't have them out there. I don't even believe they exist out there. I believe they exist right here. Okay, so I can commune with the dead. I, th those are just a dimension of me is all that is. Like William Branham said, he's talked about the, the coats. 
and he said, you know, you, you, you get one coat and it's like a flesh body, you know, get back to the, uh, theophany type terms, whatever. You get one coat and then that's a life lived. And then you hang it up in your closet and then you get another coat, right? Because you get one coat, you, you, you hang it up, you wear it out and it gets old. You know, you got this body and you wear it out and it gets old and then you get you another one, right? You get you another coat. Oh, well, no. No, Brother Cook, it can't be that. It can't be that uh, uh, well, that would be reincarnation. Well, why did he say that we get new coats? Why did he say, as far as I understand, I think there was one time he even talked about how that the graveyard, you know, tombstones in the graveyard is basically just just you, right? I mean, we, we believe in oneness or don't we, right? Do we believe in oneness or not? Because if we, if, if we don't believe in oneness, then those, those dead saints cannot be us, right? So if they're not us, then it's either, you know, it's either they're not us or they are, okay? So I'm tired, I'm tired of half-assing. I'm tired of this stupid is it or ain't it crap. I'm tired of it. Just make it simple. I thought, I've, I've thought for years that we made this too complicated. So many things I thought we made way too complicated, and I, I saw it years ago, and I'm like, this is too complicated. It was good. It was an improvement, but it was too complicated. Okay, so anyway, so here's what we got. We got... We're, we're getting these coats, okay? We're wearing these coats. And what, you know, we wore the coat of Elijah one time. We wore the coat of Elisha. We wore the coat of Jesus. We wore the coat of Moses. We're wearing the coat of Brother Cook now. We're wearing the coat of, uh, we wore the coat of uh, John Wesley. We wore the coat of Martin Luther, okay? So, we wore the coat of William Brown, okay? And those are all hung in our closet. They are not separate from us. We are them, okay? And they are essentially just different dimensions of us. If you think about it, they're occupying the same space as us because they are us. Because And they're not somewhere else. They're just us. We are them now. That's all it is. We don't need to keep them around. They just are us now. See, everybody is looking for these dead saints. They think, oh, i got to go die one day. And here's, before I get into that, let me just tell you this. Now, y'all think about this. Here's another thing that they say, oh, well, Brother Cook is preaching reincarnation. He's saying that we're reincarnated of all these uh, dead saints. Well, for one, do you believe in oneness or don't you? Okay. All right. So, uh, some of them, I, I tend to wonder. Okay. You know, uh, they say, oh, yeah, we're the Christ, and we were Moses, and we were all those guys. But whenever you say this, no, no, it's, that's reincarnation. Well, which is it? Which is it? Are we, are we one or are, or, or are we not? Are we? Uh, am I Elijah? Because they'd say, boy, we was, we was Elijah, and we was Moses, and... And, uh, you know, that was, that was all of us. Well, that sounds like reincarnation to me. If you think all those dead saints who are not dead, they're very much alive in you. Uh, if you think that those dead saints, you, you all are the ones preaching reincarnation more than I, you could say I am, because I don't believe that we die. Okay? We don't die. It, it, they say, oh, well, those dead saints, they're all, they're all us. Those dead saints ain't dead. They're us. They didn't die. They're just us, because we're still here. Who do you think we are? Okay, we did not die. You cannot reincarnate if you do not die. They say, oh, you're preaching reincarnation. You cannot reincarnate something. That, but one of the specific, the specific things of reincarnation that makes it reincarnation is that something died and then come back to something else. No, that's not what I'm saying. We do not die. We never die. What we do is, is we get different coats and we put different coats on. But we do not die. Okay, so you cannot reincarnate something that does not die. Okay, William Branham himself said it. I got to, I was listening to him one day and I thought, I thought, what, what? Now wait a minute here, Mr. Branham. I said, you're saying that, you know, it's just like life. It's like you get a, you get a coat. This is exactly what he said. I wish I had the, the Branham scripture for it. For, for those of you theologians, you know, uh, that, that need one. Those of you third coming theologians that need one. But he said, in summation, he said this. He said, he said, these coats, he said, what we do is, he said, is we get a coat and we wear it out and then we hang it in the closet and that's a testimony of what we did and that, you know, it's like, like, you, like I've had several coats myself, you know, you, you're, uh, you got a coat when you was in high school or whatever and, you know, you, you grow out of that, you can't wear that anymore or whatever, or, or it gets old or whatever, you hang it up in the closet, you might still have it. Okay, whatever. Well, that was that was what you were like. That was when you were Elijah. That was when you were John the Baptist. Okay, you got a coat of each one. You know, 
of, of when you live that life. Okay? So, but William Branham, he said, you wear a coat. And he said he was comparing the flesh body to a coat. And he said, you wear a coat. And he said, you wear it out and you hang it in the closet and you go get you another one. And that was just a testimony of you, uh, of, of your f flesh body lived for that 80 years or whatever. Okay? Well, now, well, now tell me this, Mr. Branham. Uh, whenever you wear one coat out, do you not go get another one and wear that? Would that be reincarnation? If they think that red putting on the coat is reincarnation, then he was preaching reincarnation. Because he was saying, you know, what, what naturally would have led right into, hey, well, then you go get you another coat after you wore that one out or you can't wear it anymore. Well, is that reincarnation? Well, the, the guy didn't reincarnate because he, he don't die because he just goes and gets him another coat. But the coat, yeah, the coat gets old. Okay, so, so are we saying that, you know, what, the, what they seem to want to try to say out here is if you bring this up, because, buddy, you bring this up and they will cut, you out, cut your ass clean out. They will not have it. And I'm going to tell you why here in just a minute. I'm going to tell you what spirit's behind it. The, whenever these coats, they say, they try to make it as though the coat is a reincarnation. Well, you've got to get another coat. Just You don't die, but you get another coat. Now, now if somebody was to say that the, the Theo part perhaps died, and that's going to get way off into a rabbit trail of my own mind, but nonetheless, it still really doesn't die. <laughs> you can say, well, the th does the Theo get old? I, I don't want to, look, that's for another day. That's getting way out there. That's getting way out there whether the, the Theo part actually gets old. <laughs> okay, that's way out there. I think probably it does, and it, but it probably doesn't die, just like the rest of it. So anyway, I don't know, that, that's, that's getting highly philosophical. But let me get back on point. The... Um, uh, Nonetheless, the theophany, the phany is pretty much the coat, and the theo is the, the thing, the, the man that don't die, okay? The coat, the flesh bodies, you know, they say, well, uh, I, I mean, why, why is this so hard? They said, uh, William Branham himself said that, uh, you know, Elijah and Elisha, they all had the same spirit, and John the Baptist, and then William Branham, and they all had the spirit of Elijah. What is that? It, look. If I'm preaching reincarnation, then he preached reincarnation. There it comes back to the same thing. Either it is or it ain't. Okay? You all, can, they can just cut the crap. I'm tired of it. If, if I'm preaching reincarnation, then so did he. So if, if he's reincarnation, then so am I. And I'll just take my place amongst William Branham. I think it's a pretty good place to be. And I'll just have to be, you'll just have to label me and William Branham both as reincarnationists. For, ha for having said this, because it's exactly what he was saying. He said, you get a coat, and you get a new coat, and it wears out, and you get a new coat, and that's the way it works. Okay, so if that's reincarnation, then I'm a reincarnationist, but I'm a reincarnationist William Branham. If it was reincarnation that people come back as different spirits, and that spirit comes back over and over again in a different uh, body, essentially, which he said, which is exactly what he said, that they kept, take, kept taking on that same spirit, then if that's reincarnation, well, I'm a reincarnation of William Branham. Do what you got to do. All right. So, and anyway, I want to get down to the spirit, the spirit of the thing, and I want to nail that spirit, and I want to burn it up. I want to tell you all what's going on out here. What's going on is the reason that they hate that so much, the reason that they hate this so much, these ideas that this could be uh, like it is, like I'm, like I'm telling that it is, is because... What is going on is, is it's this old church age spirit that we have killed so many of them and one is trying to hang on. We have killed the idea of the rapture being a physical event. Okay, We've killed the, the idea of the separation of you and Christ. We've killed these things. These were just, just church, age, church age constructs. Okay, We kill them. We kill them all the time. We won't kill another one off today. The veneration of dead saints. This is what they don't want killed off because they're still, they're still church age style. They're still mother church. The mother church is still, the, the ideas of the mother church is still right here in the third coming. They won't let go of it. They, you, you think that we're, we're so far ahead here, and in a way we are, but in a way we ain't. Because with everybody's idea of these dead saints out here, because they still think that in some form or another, like, you know, it might not, they might not have gotten up to the physio-dimensional version of it, 
which that's still 50-50 dead saints. And then uh, uh, they might be in more of a, a, a pre-physio-dimensional third coming version of things. And they've still got just looking at it pretty much just like the message people did, the mother church. And, you know, just like, well, there's, there's dead people, just like, the, just like it's mother church before it back in the, back in the, the church ages, you know, the, 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 the second Babylon, I guess you would say. The, what it's all about is, is that they still, the veneration of dead saints has just modernized just like everything else that we tore down because Revelation tore it down and modernized it and got rid of it and blew it up, the rapture, for example, and made it a revelation, made it understanding what it is. This, they don't want that spirit is trying to keep the veneration of dead saints. It's what we have here now in the third coming is nothing but the veneration of dead saints. If you think these dead saints are over here somewhere, then you are venerating dead saints. That's all it is. The dead saints are right here. They ain't dead. They ain't even dead. You can't venerate dead saints if they ain't dead because they ain't dead. What did uh, what did uh, William Branham? What did William Branham was supposed to said to Don Parnell in that vision? He said, "Oh no, brother Parnell, we're very much alive. We're not dead." Okay, so everybody's looking for these dead people. These dead people ain't dead for one thing, and you can't venerate a dead uh, an alive person as a dead saint. You can't do it. So whenever, it's, whenever I get to clear this up and you find out, well, the dead saints are even out here anyway, and then they're just a revelation of who you are and who you've always been and the oneness of that, then you realize that you can't venerate them anymore. You can't pull that, that Mother Church ideology of lighting candles to the dead saints. What are we doing here? This has been nothing. This stuff is that spirit has crept, that spirit of lighting them candles to them dead saints and saying, oh, brother, one day we're going to die and we're going to get out of here and we're going to go see these dead saints and I'm going to go see my mommy and daddy and my, my grandma and all this bullshit. That is nothing but venerating the dead saints. Because if you think that they're dead and they're somewhere else other than you, then you're wrong on both accounts. Because they're right here, they didn't go anywhere, and they're not dead. Okay? They're just another, essentially, dimension of you. Okay? And all that is, is thinking all this stuff is nothing but just what are they doing? Oh, what do I say? But I can see I, I can see through this junk. I see what they're really doing. What they say is, is they say they're still talking about, well, now, uh, one day I'm going to die. See, die, death is not even true either. Death was a construct of the mother church too. Why? Because you can scare people with death. Okay, death death is not even real. You don't die. We, we never die. But the, but the concept was you die and then you go see the dead saints, right? You know, you're raptured. And maybe you won't even die. Maybe you'll just be raptured out before you actually, before you're... Your flesh body gets eight, uh, 90 years old and croaks out. And then you'll go see the dead saints then. You know, you'll either get raptured and go see them or you'll die and you'll go see them. Okay, so the idea was what? Die and go see dead saints. Wrong on both accounts. A, the saints ain't dead. They're you. They're alive. And B, you never die. Your coat gets old and you put on a new coat, but you don't die. Okay. Uh, look. What I, what I see is, is these, the people out here that's still looking for these dead saints, what I see is in the third coming to this day that they're talking about all these dead saints and dead this and that and whoever, whatever, okay, I'm going to go see them when I die, all right? What that is is the very ideology of that, in my opinion, the very ideology that they're separate from you to even to 50% degree of, uh, uh, of things is... The same as the Mother Church. Somebody going to the Mother Church and light a candle for Mother Mary. That's all it is. It's the same thing. It's the same spirit has crept right on up into here. And when it's time, we, we cut its head off. It's time we said no more of this venerating dead saints bullcrap. No more. Okay? I'm going to tell you all something. So that's why they don't like it, because it's an attack on their Mother Church ideology. They do not like it, and they will... They will they will try to kill your ideology because that's what they do. Because it's an ideological war out here right now. It's an ideological, everything moved from physical to ideological. And any time somebody says something like that, what are they going to try to do? Cut your head off. Cut your ideology, not, not necessarily your head, but cut your, you know, your physical head, but cut your ideological head off. You, you put that on Facebook, cut off. Buddy, they'll cut that off. They'll, they'll delete that. And you won't, you won't be able to, they'll cut your head off and they'll say, oh, they'll delete it. And then anytime, 
I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I find it funny how much people uh, talk about, oh boy, we're, we're Americans, we got free speech, and then they'll delete anything you got to say. Anything you try to say, they'll delete it. I find it funny over the years. I've found that real funny over the years. So anyway, so anyway, um, uh, so they're they're after that. They don't want they don't want something like that out because that buddy that that gets right in the way of their their uh, dead saints venerating dead saints and 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 that pretty much just tears down the church. It tears down their church, their ideology. A church is an ideology, you know, a philosophy of things. Well, it tears down their Third Testament church if you if you're going to uh, tear down the ideology of uh, uh, you know it, it gets in, it causes a lot of problems whenever these things are not so cut and dried for them that you venerate dead saints in, in such a modern third coming type of way because you know that's uh, well that gets into a problem of uh, well uh, should we question a lot of other things should we uh, uh, sh- you know how should we look at holiness how should we look at a lot of other things ooh that, that's dangerous there whenever you get rid of dead saints hmm. so anyway they don't want that okay I've, I've had my ideological head cut off for trying to preach this so anyway so that's why it's a it's that same old mother church spirit, that, that same old mother church venerating saint spirit weaved its way and modernized its way right down in here into third coming, okay, and it's still here all the way to the end, even with the physio dimensional version of it, it's still here fifty percent, okay. So I want it, I want its head cut clean off, okay. So uh, before I leave, before I leave you, let me leave you with this. Talking about death, okay. I've explained how that we're not venerating dead saints anymore. The dead saints don't even exist. They're just, they're here. For one, they're not dead. They're here. They're us. And it's just a revelation that they are just a revelation is all they are. Just like the rapture was, because if the dead saints are going to be in the rapture, and the rapture got changed to a revelation, and that means the only way that you can have dead saints in a rapture revel- in a revelation rapture is that the dead saints themselves have to be a revelation. You can't do it any other way. They don't fit. You can't put physical saints in a revelation rapture. They got to be here. Because William Branham said, "Hey, you get the rapture, you get all those where the dead saints are at too." So if they got to be there. So I'm telling you, they got to be. They cannot. You cannot have physical dead saints in a in a. If you change the rapture to a revelation, then that means that those dead saints have to themselves have been changed from a. If you change a physical event rapture to a revelation, then physical dead people in some form or another in whatever even a dimensional form, whatever, they have to have become a revelation. You cannot have them in, the, the rapture cannot be made a revelation without making the dead saints a revelation. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. You know, horse and carriage, you can't have one without the other. Okay, so, so anyway, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And if you get what I'm saying, well, you'll get what I'm saying. Okay. So let me talk about another thing that they don't, boy, they don't want this to go away either because this is just makes it too easy for them to rule and control over your mind. Death. Death was a construct. See, it all goes back to the dead saints again, you know, dead, burying your dead. That's all everybody is doing. Is all I can talk about is death. That's all you got out here, death, death, death. Everybody talking about death. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how that they control people. They control people by saying, well, take it back to the original, to the let's go really far back and let's get into some little bit of church history here. What did the mother church do? What was it all about in the beginning? It was about uh, scaring people that whenever they died, they were going to go to hell. Okay, and then they had to, you know, uh, they had to pay and they had to pay indulgences or whatever to stay out of hell. Okay, well, that's, that's what they did to control people. They had this this construct of death itself they made up death and death don't exist except for the fact that death does exist death see you've got to make death see all this stuff did exist but it goes from physical to a revelation okay so death we know that death is not a physical event anymore it's just like all the rest of it you take it either either it's all a revelation and it's not a physical event or it's all physical events and we all need to go back and join the mother church and light some candles for mother mary it's one or the other okay so 
I'm personally, I got more respect for somebody that would go to the Mother Church right now and light candles for Mother Mary and say, it's all physical, than I got for somebody that's half-ass in the middle and can't figure out whether it's physical and say, well, this is physical, but this ain't. I mean, I almost, I, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe they're a little bit more advanced. Whatever. I, nonetheless, none of it's any good. Okay. I was saying that maybe one's better than the other. But nonetheless, we can do better. So death, death was a physical event, right? Okay, death is no more a physical event. It's a spiritual revelation. Everything that we thought was a physical event, make it a revelation and it'll clear it all up. Death is when you, as a person, have a revelation and you die to what you believed beforehand and now you've, you've had a revelation. That's a death. That's what death is. And then I'm going to tell you something. Like I said, I died and had a revelation and understood that the dead saints are just a revelation and now I see the dead saints. Everything works out. Once you make everything a revelation and stop making one thing physical and one thing a revelation, everything dovetailed right together, buddy, whenever I figured that out. And I said, uh, but anyway, death, death is just something to control you with. So what do they got? What do we do? You know, it used to be that uh, it was uh, selling indulgences to people to try to keep them out of hell, whatever. You know, you had to pay the church some money to keep you out of hell. Well, that's a good way of controlling people. And then what did it do? It moved up into this, oh boy, you got this, this death hanging over your head and you might, uh, you, you know, you don't have to pay indulgences to the church anymore, but you got to live holy, you know. Give me a friggin' break. Enough. Enough. What, what being holy is just your modern version of paying indulgences to the church. That's all it is. Right up to the right up to the dang uh, uh, third coming, third testament people, and and probably into the love divine and everything else. It's still here. I still got these crazy ideas of living holy, of, of, of paying indulgences to the church. You know, you got to live holy to your ideology. It's the, it's the pay indulgences to the church. It's the same thing. These these spirits. Have, have come right up from the uh, mother church. They come up from the mother church in the middle of the age of Pisces that Martin Luther had to protest against. They've been right there in the mother church of the, of the Branhamites today that the third coming had to preach against. And then they, then they were in the daughters. They're still in it, the, just like they were in the daughters in the end of the, the church ages, the, those same spirits. They're in the daughters now of the, of the mother church. The mother Branhamite church is the, the daughters of it is none other than these. Third Testament and love divine ideologies out here. It's not the people, it's the ideologies. Everything's went into, moved into a dimension of, of mind, you see. It's all ideologies now. It's not about, it's not physical events, it's ideological mental events. It's, or things, or ideologies, or understandings. And those, those same spirits have come right in to these, to these love divine and Third Testament people, or, or ideologies, and it's the same spirits that was all the way back there in the mother churches before. And all you've got with this, all you've got with this, with the, with the third coming revolution, essentially, was a reformation, I should say. It's just that, a reformation. Whenever we come out of the mother church, the Brandomite church, we had the, the Protestant reformation of into the third coming. It was a modern Protestant reformation. And then what do you got after that? You got... You got these. Uh, what it, it's turned into uh, Third Testament and Love Divine ideologies. What do you got? Daughters of the Great Whore. That's all you got. They think they're, buddy. They think they're something, and they ain't nothing. That wouldn't save them for nothing. Like William Branham said, they wouldn't. That wouldn't save them in understanding for nothing. It's not a matter of being physically saved anymore. Being saved is a revelation, an understanding. You see, everything's a revelation, and understanding. Consider this. Anybody ever watched the Twilight Zone? What did they say? You're moving from a, as, as far as I can remember. You're moving from a uh, Rod Serling said, uh, you're moving from a uh, dimension of sight and, and what was it? Uh, a physical di uh, dimension of sight and sound. And uh, you're entering, entering a dimension of the mind. See, that's exactly what we did. We moved from sight and sound and physical, and we moved to a dimension of the mind. It's the mind age. Everything's the mind now, okay? But that don't mean that you don't. What you've got now is you've got an ideological daughters of the great whore church out here, which is none other than our ideologies of Third Testamentism and Love Divinism, that are still carrying these, these leftover spirits of the original uh, mother church. It, it That was just the Protestant Reformation. We've come over here and went, oh, we got the daughters of the, of the dang thing. We had the, we had the, the, mother, the mother great whore uh, Branhamite church, and now 
they promised a reformation out of that under the third coming, and then what did they become? Just the daughters of the dang thing, and they got the same, all the same spirits over again, and you try to say something to them, and what do they do? They, they turn right uh, mother church on you, daughter church on you real quick out here. Okay? So anyway, uh, the next thing is this. I wanted to talk about death just a minute, and I wanted to, or lack thereof, let's say. And I'm just about done. Because my, my wife's getting tired. I can see she's getting tired. She, she's, she's man on the camera. Yeah, she's getting tired. Okay. So, let me just tell you this little tale of death and I'll be done. Typology. How you test things is, William Brandon said, give it the old litmus test. You know, litmus paper was you put it in... I guess you put paper in some sort of fluid and it turned a certain color and that was how you know, you know, you give it to litmus test. I don't know. So anyway, I, I give things to litmus test. I give things to typology test. I don't care about, I only care if it matches the test. I don't care about my opinions. If I got to change my opinions, then I'll change my opinions. Okay. But here's, here's, a, you test everything by typology. Typology will tell you whether you're true or not. It's like, there goes back to kind of like scientific method again. You know, how do you find out, well, how did they find out what was the perfect metal to, to work in an old light bulb? You know, it used to be, uh, uh, was it tungsten? You put, you know, uh, what was the story? Thomas Edison had all these dudes out there, and they was just trying different types of metal to which one would work in a light bulb without burning out before too long because all their light bulbs was burning out too quick. And they finally, I think, found tungsten was the metal, and they, and they put it in there, and buddy, the light bulb, there it went. It, it worked for worked for as long as it you know reasonably needed to, so it was just a matter of testing it, and they eventually found it. So that's why I'm saying typology is kind of like scientific research in spiritual terms. And so anyway, <laughs> it's really what it is. So anyway, so let's do a little bit of research here. Let's do a little bit of testing. How you find out what, you know, we're talking about this Piscean physical version of death, you know, when you get old and when you die, your coat gets old and when your coat dies, you know. So everybody's talking about that and they think, uh, you know, that's just the worst thing ever, you know, death. So anyway, but that is not even true. Death ain't even true. Here's what it is. Here's, let me explain to you how that passing of one coat to the next is going to work. Okay, and I can use astrology and, and the solar calendar and everything to explain it. You, what you do is, if you want to know what it's going to be like for you to uh, proverbially pass on from one coat to the next, here's how you figure it out. Find something else that does the same thing and see how that affects that. Okay, so here's how you do it. In astrology, when you, here's, where's the death at in astrology? Where's the death at in a year? Every year, a year dies. Or, let's say, puts on a new year. Doesn't really die, does it? Okay. So, what happens is, is when does the year die? The year dies at the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries, okay? Aries is the baby. It represents birth to the year seven years old. Pisces is at the very end of the zodiac, and it represents the year 77 to 84, or when you're, you know, you're getting, you're practically dead, right? You know, you're dead at 84. Okay, so anyway, when... When the day of, I guess it's March 21st, which ends Pisces and begins Aries, that is the end of the year and the beginning of the year. I assume that's why the old Jewish calendar had it as, you know, that was the beginning of the year. It was right there in the beginning of spring, right? So anyway, uh, so the year goes through putting on a new coat. It don't never die a year time. The astrological thing, the zodiac, doesn't ever die. It just puts on a new year. Okay, so, so, um, so what happens on March 21st every year? What happens on that day that is uh, the ending, the death, the proverbial death, for lack of better words? We use Piscean terms to describe things, even, even if we'd like to have better, but sometimes you still have to. So I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Cut me some break, right? You know, doing the best I can here until I can get a better Aquarian version of things. I'm... You know, whatever. I do the best I can, but but nonetheless, if I've got something, you need to listen to it. And you need to you need to can, certainly consider it. Okay, so I'm doing the best I can. But but if I got some some things, I don't know everything. But some things, I I'm pretty I'm right sure of it. Okay. So anyway. So, 
So you go from one year to the next, March 21st. Well, what happens on March 21st? Consider this. I'll give you another example. Before I tell you that, I'll give you another example. Jesus, the whole resurrection story, the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? What was, what was the astrological ages there? The astrological age that was ending up was Aries and Pisces. Well, we're going retrograde. In this case, we're going from uh, uh, the beginning to the end. But nonetheless, it's the same concept. What you have is, is you have a concept there of the beginning and ending of the year at the end of Aquarius, at the end of Aries and the beginning of Pisces, right? Or the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries, right? So that point right there is the beginning and the ending, the death, burial, and resurrection, for lack of better words. Except we know Jesus didn't die, right? You know, I mean, he didn't, he didn't really die. <laughs> okay, that's the point. He's, he's trying to, he, through what he did, he's trying to explain what I'm talking about here. He didn't really die, but he did go through a death, burial, and a resurrection of some extent. But it wasn't really a death, was it? Okay, so anyway, the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries is the year's death, burial, and resurrection, but the year don't die. And Jesus didn't die, but he went through the death, burial, and resurrection to signify the beginning and the ending of the zodiac, essentially, in that it was the it was the end of uh, Aries going into Pisces right there at the death, because that's the beginning, that's the ending and the beginning, the death and the beginning, like I said. Okay, so Jesus is just an example of what went on there. He was just an example. Okay, so so here's what happens. Let me let me ask you. So what's going to happen to you when you you put on a new coat? Here's what's going to happen to you. Take the year as your example. What happens to you on March 21st? What happens? What, is there, has anybody ever thought much about March 21st? Today, I, I think it's 21st. Whenever we switch from Aries to Pisces, every year we do this. Okay, what happens to you on March 21st? Nothing noteworthy. Nothing more than any other day of the year. And that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's always been, in fact. We are just a microcosm of the whole zodiac of time itself. So what happens is, is... On the, on the day that you hit your Piscean point of life, you're 84 years old and you're, you're croaking out, what's going to happen to you is it's going, it's going to be like March 21st is to the year. It's just seamless. You're just going to seamlessly cross from one coat to the next. You ain't even going to know it. You've done it so many times already and you don't even know it because you don't die. Well, if you don't die and you're eternal, then that means you had to have been doing this before you're doing what you're doing right now and you're going to be doing it afterwards. That's how things work. You know, you got history and then you got the future. Okay, so that's so you're you're historical just as much as you are future. Okay, you didn't you didn't have a beginning or an end, or you are the beginning and the end, whichever way you want to look at it. And you've done this so many times already, and you don't even know it. You have crossed from one coat to the next seamlessly so many times, and you didn't even know it. And everybody's scared to death of death. They think, oh gosh, what's that going to be like? It's just going to be seamless. It's going to be as seamless as any other day of the year. This is to be the day you died and the day you you was reborn. As as a, a part of humanity, that's all it's going to be, and everybody. And what do they do? What what does religiosity out here, even up into our day, what do they want to do? They want to take something and they want to use it and make it something that it's not to control you with. That's what they've always done, and that's why they say they make something that and make it sound scary. That way, they can control you with it because if they can scare you and they make you have fear. Then they can control you. But you know what did our great Aquarian president FDR tell us? Fear is only, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So anyway, if you don't fear fear, then you won't have a problem. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not taken in by the fear that they try to put on you through the mother church ideologies, then you don't have a problem. You don't have any of this problem anymore of, of misunderstanding and of death and, and the dead saints and all, thinking all this crazy stuff. Look, it's just all very simple, but they, but they want you to be in fear. They want you to be, be scared that you, you know, it right up into this day, they're they're trying to scare people with holiness and the death and all this and that, you know. And it's, God, forget it. Had enough of it, man. God, God, I'm man. I, I tell you what, I've had so much of it over the years, and I'm glad this. I'm glad this sermon is over. I'm glad. I'm glad that I've I've officially preached this sermon, and it's over. Now everybody can just chew on this because I don't have to preach it again. I didn't. I didn't say it once. You know, whoever believes it, whoever don't, I done said it. I'm done now. I've done exposed death and the dead saints and the whole 
uh, construct of the whole thing. I've done, I've done exposed it. It's all over now. So I, I'm glad it's over. It's been over for me for a long time. And because uh, I have thought this stuff for a long time. And of course, every day you get a little bit more understanding of how to better explain it. So actually, I preached this message a while back, but probably nobody got it because I didn't have quite this way of explaining myself. I'm like the monster on Young Frankenstein when he, when he, uh, he got uh, his brain attached to the doctor and he could, uh, he could communicate. You know, he had a better way of expressing himself. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, I'm going to end it. Uh, uh, see y'all later.